Honestly, I think they failed poorly. They did an F. I feel like, uh, from my perspective, uh, looking at the data for, my, for Ontario, I feel like pass or fail is, is too much of a, a black and white objective. I think there are some aspects where we are doing well, where we've been achieving uh, more and more over the past few years, but there are still some aspects where we're falling behind and need to put in additional resources. I would say that failed. So we are very good in terms of providing the diagnosis so people easily get uh, their diagnosis at, a, at any healthcare uh, clinic. But in terms of engaging them into getting the medication and also committed to it become undetectable. This is uh, the part that we're failing because the medication is not freely, freely covered universally to everyone in the country, especially for those who hold a precarious immigration status. I would say for a country with so much uh, wealth and resources that Canada has failed. Um, I know we've reached two of the targets, but we still have 17,000 people who are not engaged in care in Canada. I am going to be generous on Canada and not say it's a pass or fail, but maybe it's a to redo, I'm neutral. <laughs> Majority of people living with HIV or at risk for HIV cannot access the prevention, treatment, and care they need to be in the 19. I can only speak as a black woman, as an immigrant, and as a black person. And uh, when I speak about that, we know that as of 2019, Black women and black men are overrepresented in the new HIV diagnosis. 42% uh, of all new diagnoses in 2019 were black women. 17.7% of all new diagnoses among men was black men. So since then, we've seen that HIV, while HIV is reducing among gay men, men who have sex with men, the numbers are increasing among racialized people and more specifically black people. So I cannot say that they've done well since they signed on. Based on my demographic, they've actually done poorly. On a fait de très grands progrès au Canada dans les dernières années en matière de certains des objectifs. Un des objectifs qu'on atteint très bien, c'est l'objectif de, que notre, notre charge virale soit indétectable une fois qu'on est traité. Provinces comme like BC et uh, Alberta do have HIV treatment for all people living with HIV, but Ontario does not. As I said at the beginning, so we are doing pretty well in providing the diagnosis to persons. Uh, they are certain support that now is improving, but it's, I would say that it's kind of band-aid that for folks that don't have insurance, they can get uh, the medication through patient program from the pharmaceutical company. So we're doing kind of well, but it's just a temporary solution. I would say that Canada's commitment to the Global Fund to fight AIDS, uh, tuberculosis and malaria has been a good commitment. They've committed more than 1.2 billion to the global response to um, address HIV. Um, but that doesn't give us a free pass at home, and I think we still need to fund the domestic HIV response. In some aspects, there are things that we have done well. I think there has been a little more like awareness. I think that places actually like Katie has done a lot of education and information. So one aspect where we've really succeeded is in the analysis and the collection of the data that's required to measure the 90-90-90. Uh, and this has happened both at the provincial level and at the federal level. So PHAC really stepped up um, in the publication of the 90-90-90 and also in their working with the provinces to improve their own metrics uh, and to produce local care cascades and 90-90-90s for each of the provinces. Une chose qu'on va faire encore mieux au cours des prochaines années, c'est bâtir un système de soins de santé où l'accès à des services de première ligne, qu'on appelle des services de soins primaires, est plus facile et plus équitable. Et c'est non seulement important parce que les soins de santé primaires, un accès à des soins de santé familiaux, mais c'est la, la, la base d'un système de santé qui fonctionne bien, mais dans un contexte de lutte contre le VIH, de lutte contre la discrimination, de lutte contre la stigmatisation, c'est aussi un point central de nos relations avec les provinces et les territoires. Pour que les gens se sentent en sécurité, trouvent ça facile d'aller consulter, pour qu'il y ait aussi un suivi de ces consultations, pour que les gens aient le goût de revenir voir leurs leur, leur professionnels de la santé, que ce soit une infirmière, que ce soit un, un médecin. Donc, 
bâtir davantage de liens entre les, les fournisseurs de soins pour que les gens se, soient, se sentent vraiment à l'aise et reçoivent les services dont ils ont besoin. You know, 2025 is already in two years. I feel, I feel like we're, we're always, yeah, forgetting that. And I'm like, okay, if we're not going to miss targets, it needs to get to the table. And one thing I say, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. And there's a lot of tables that we've even seen at CAR that I'm, I look at it and I'm like, oh, I, I'm not seeing enough color or I'm not seeing enough of this. And so I do feel like, okay, I'm on the menu or it's just not a priority for this. Well, first of all, offer the coverage of medication universally free for every single person living with HIV in Canada, not in different provinces because it forces people to look for medication, to commute to another province seeking healthcare. But if they can have the medication universally free cover for every single person, it would be amazing because they, in, in the end, they, the last, the goal is to make people undetectable. And if we fail in one of the stages, we're not gonna reach that goal. From, a, the, from the perspective of an epidemiologist, normalizing our data systems, being able to aggregate better across provinces, having more local data, uh, and collaborating more across the country to ensure we have the best possible metrics, that we know what's happening to people living with HIV, how they're migrating across the country, how they're, how they're moving through systems, to ensure that people have access to drug coverage when they need it, uh, that they're able to have consistent adherence to ARTs and achieve viral suppression. So not all provinces provide the same uh, type of care or accessible care for everybody equally. So it's really difficult to measure as a country unless we do the measurement across provinces. The first thing is to fund the domestic HIV response. Uh, we've had HIV funding frozen since 2008. That's 15 years of the same dollars being uh, spent on HIV prevention, services, care, treatment and support and organizations are being stretched to do more with less dollars. So we need to fund the HIV response up to $100 million. That's what advocates and policymakers have been saying for the last 15 years. 